All right, welcome back to Father and Son Investing. We're going to continue the second video now in the series on biotech investing. Today I'm going to be talking about the SPDR S&P Biotech ETF that goes by the ticker symbol XBI. Now, why do I want to talk about this one? Well, I really like a few things about this ETF. The first one is going to be its expense ratio, 0.35%, very reasonable. Now, I say pretty reasonable because compared to a lot of other ETFs, this expense ratio is not very high. But keep in mind that this is not an actively managed ETF. This ETF follows an index and is passively managed. Essentially, whatever the index has, this ETF tries to replicate it. So at 0.35%, that is a little bit more than you might find on, say, some of the Vanguard ETFs that are not actively managed. Nevertheless, 0.35%, that means you're going to spend $35 a year if you invest $10,000. Now, what's another thing that I like about this ETF? This is an equally weighted ETF. So sometimes the ETFs will be market cap weighted. That means that the big boys in the, uh, the big dogs in the arena are the ones that are going to have the most weight. That's an ETF like IBB, which we'll be talking about for the next video. But this ETF is equally weighted. You're going to see that here, the, its number one holding, Ocugen, only makes up 1.3% of this ETF. If we go down to the bottom, the bottom holding here is going to make up about 0.1% or so uh, here at Cullinan Oncology. So nothing in this ETF is really going to make up more than 2%. So you're spreading out your risk here pretty equally among everything. Now, what is then one of the drawbacks to that? Well, if one of these companies hits it big, like Ocugen or Moderna, there isn't a lot of weight here that's really going to increase or make a huge bump in the value of XBI individually. Now, what's another thing that I like about this ETF? This ETF is not loaded with a bunch of the large cap companies. Now, you will see some in here, but most of these companies, or at least a lot of them, are going to be in the mid cap and small cap range. In fact, I'm going to take you to the prospectus for this ETF, and we'll just see what some of the rules are for its holdings. I have it highlighted here that it says that they must have a float-adjusted market cap greater than or equal to $500 million. So we're talking about some pretty small companies in here in that $500 million range. And in fact, they say that if they fall below $300 million, well, then they're going to kick them off their list. So we could see companies with market caps as low as... 300 million. Another thing that I like about this ETF then is because it has so many smaller companies within its holdings, there are a lot of companies in here that are going to be merger and acquisition targets. Of course, when those M&A deals go through, they usually go through at a premium for the price of the stock, and that of course can up the price for this XBI ETF. What else do I like about this ETF? Well, it's currently trading right around $90. And if we go back to when it was last at about $90, we're looking at January of 2020. And if we go back even further, you know, we're looking at 2018 to 2019 kinds of prices. In fact, its 52-week low is $80. So that's a little bit above the 52-week low and certainly well off of the 52-week high. Now, what do you need to know about this ETF if you're going to choose to invest in it? Well, first of all, you're choosing to invest in biotechnology companies, and those companies are heavily invested in research and development that may not necessarily lead to any commercially successful products. That is a huge risk. That is why I would be advocating to invest in this sector via an ETF versus just individual stocks. In fact, biotech stocks, especially those of smaller, less seasoned companies, they tend to be more volatile than the overall market. So using an ETF to invest here may help you out a little bit on that volatility. Remember, there are some bigger cap companies in here to help offset some of those smaller cap companies. And the other thing you need to be thinking about is that biotech companies can be significantly affected by technological change or their products just becoming obsolete and sometimes becoming obsolete really fast. Also remember that Many of these biotech companies, probably the majority of them, are in the healthcare sector, and that healthcare sector is subject to extensive government regulation, i.e., the FDA. 
Of course, volatility we discussed, and here's just a good example of that volatility. You'll see that they have some outstanding years, and you'll see that they have some years where they are losing money. So overall, will these outstanding years make up for these years where they lose money? I think in the long run, yes, they do. But if you're looking at this for a short-term investment, you may get caught. In fact, if you look here, you'll see that the lowest quarterly return has been 26% loss in one quarter. You'll see that for 2021, they were down 20%. And if you look at the biotechnology sector industry index, which this is the index that it that XBI seeks to replicate, you're going to see that even year to date, they're down 22%. So just keep in mind that one of the risks here is going to be volatility, especially given the number of mid and small cap stocks that this ETF is going to carry. Nevertheless, I think some of the positives outweigh the negatives here when it comes to investing in XBI. Keep in mind that many of these companies are in the healthcare sector and healthcare spending is only going to increase. Populations around the world are becoming older and healthcare spending, therefore, is increasing it's increasing all the time and in fact it's estimated in the not too distant future that the gdp of the united states will be made up of 20 percent healthcare spending okay that's all i have for you then for xbi why do i think it's worth investing well uh, there's certainly growth ahead and we're looking at prices that are really back in the 2020 and 2018 range this feels like a good time to enter position here or strengthen your position. At least that's what I think. Of course, you'll have to do your own due diligence and come up with your own opinion. If you have other thoughts about this, please feel free to comment on them. Share this information with a young person in your life and make investing a family affair. And of course, as always, until next time, enjoy your investing.